Hey, what's up all you do-it-yourselfers? My name is Dylan Taylor. This is my workshop and today we are going to be modifying my work toolbox to fit a new saw that I got for Christmas from my brother. So this is the toolbox that I carry with me to work every day. Uh, we do trim carpentry. This is a toolbox that I got off Facebook Marketplace for $20 and it satisfied what I needed. It needed a box that I could safely transport my nice measuring tools in. It's been a really awesome toolbox for 20 bucks. Considering I couldn't have even bought the hardware or the plywood for for that, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. This is the toolbox. The drawers come out, sit right here, and keep tape measures in here, laser measure, nice pocket ruler. The Starrett uh, miter finder, it just tells you right what to cut when you're doing a lot of things. A lot easier than having to use an angle finder and then do some math, keep a knife in there. There's going to be a lot of modification that happens. I just figured that I should get some use into this to figure out what is actually important that I would need to make uh, proper storage for, and we'll get to that. One of the things that we use is a coping saw, and right now the coping saw just sits down here. I think it's $15, $20 Baco coping saw. It works great. It does its job. It's got a painted wooden handle, a steel body, and the blade. The only thing that is going to get damaged inside of this specific box is this blade. The gift that my brother got me for Christmas was a New Concepts coping saw, and I want to use it at work. This New Concepts coping saw is really awesome. It's amazing. It's got a cam lever tension. Uh, you can set it to whatever you'd like. It's got detents at every 45 degrees so that the blade is always straight. It's not twisted like this one when you tighten the handle. And the blade's just much, much tighter. It's actually, believe it or not, even though it's way larger, this is much lighter than this. This is aluminum. They also make a titanium one. I want to take this to work with me because I don't cope so much trim at home. Uh, but I want to get use out of it, make, make use of this amazing tool. So I don't want to just stick this down in there because I don't want the paint to get all dinged up. Eventually during use it will, but I just, I want to take really good care of this and that doesn't belong down in the bottom of this toolbox getting jumbled around. This is fine down there. This is not. So the problem became, how am I going to get it in this box, take it to work with me so that uh, I can use it at work. And the only thing that I could come up with without redesigning the whole box or making a box for this to fit in uh, is to put it right here. And there is room when this closes uh, for it to be within this lid. As you can see that there is some uh, girth to this and all of that is actually open space. So it's a matter of finding a way to fasten it in here. The way that I'm going to do that is with some basswood that we're going to cut up in specific shapes that get glued on here and then that will give it a place to stay without moving anywhere but it doesn't stop it from falling directly out. So for that, uh, I, what I planned on doing was taking these old watch bands that I have and using them like this somehow to be able to latch this in place. I could do that or I could do some kind of wooden block that turns. I'm not entirely sure yet, but this was uh, this is one of my plans. So I'm taking this piece of basswood, getting it uh, approximately the right size, just so I have an easier piece to work with here. And now I'm setting the coping saw on there and I'm going to trace right around the curves uh, where this block's gonna go because this block's going to be the centerpiece that the saw rests on. There's our marks, I think you can see them. We're going over to the miter saw because it's uh, not quite a square cut. I am holding the block just a little bit away from the fence, but it's a straight cut. So I'm making that with the miter saw uh, just because it's going to be quicker. And then I'm coming over to the band saw here to do the corner pieces. So we're just following the line that we just drew tracing the coping saw shape. Uh, since it's about three quarter inch thick material, uh, I'm using the band saw as opposed to say using the coping saw that we've got right here. Uh, it's just faster and I have it right there. If you don't have that, you could use a coping saw to cut that shape. I'm taking my router with an eighth inch roundover bit just to make that a 
a nice smooth transition you're going to be moving the saw in and out of that box quite often and just gonna go around and sand it so it looks a little bit nicer i think i went 120 grit and then 220 grit and that's going to make it nice enough for a toolbox it's going to get beat up but also it's smooth and looks nice I'm sanding off a little bit of the varnish that whoever made this toolbox put on there. They didn't sand the varnish, so it was still kind of a little bit rough. Sanding that just so that the glue sticks better. I'm using my glue bot here that I got for Christmas. I am also using cyan acrylite super glue with activator here, and that is so that it, it glues instantly. I've got marks that you can't see so that I can realign this where I wanted it. I put those on while the saw was in the right spot. The wood glue is going to dry after the super glue and it's going to be a lot stronger than the super glue that dries instantly, but that instant bond is sometimes really nice for getting a project like this done in a day. I am tracing the coping saw on this smaller piece and I will be cutting it out on the band saw because, again, it's a long cut and I don't really feel like doing it with the coping saw considering the band saw is right there. We'll be using the coping saw quite enough cutting baseboard. And uh, I noticed that there are some screws protruding from the piano hinge there. So I'm just taking the angle grinder here and I'm getting rid of the, the sharp points, just making it smooth with the surface. And I did that on the other side as well, uh, just because I had the angle grinder there and I didn't want those to be poking through for any other future things that I add to this toolbox. Okay, so I've been sitting here uh, doing this. Things changed a lot. We're not going to use these uh, watch bands. My fiance and I were discussing and uh, these are not going to be, um, they're not gonna work. It's just gonna be too much of a pain to unbuckle and buckle those and they're not gonna hold it as tight as we wanted it to. So what we've got is this piece, which I cut. You Actually, you guys saw me cut that. I just added little blocks under here. So it's got a little bit of support there. And then I cut a block that was the right thickness down here just to support the bottom of that. And a triangle right here that is thick enough that it comes to the face of the saw where it sits. This is actually what I ended up coming up with. I've got a little copper screw here, or at least copper colored, I'm not sure. And a basswood triangle that matches the, the triangle uh, pillar here that we've got. We've got another one over here that, that has a little toggle on it. And so that is not going anywhere. So I'm gonna show you how I did that over here. Up to this point, it's basically just been cut and glue after tracing the saw onto some basswood. So I actually have this other piece traced onto this piece of basswood. And I did it in a way that the grain would be running the length of the, the hypotenuse of this so that it runs this way so that there's least chance of it breaking off. I wouldn't want it to be running this direction and have uh, the point of this long toggle be weak grain and have it be able to be snapped. So that's what I was going for here. I could cut this on the bandsaw, but I've also decided, you know, it'd be nice if I used it to make its own nesting cradle here. So that's what we're going to do here. <laughs> the saw that's great all right guys uh, so this is uh, how it works. The saw comes right down. It is uh, right here. Beautiful looking saw. It's in there pretty snug. It's not going anywhere. It can't. Flip these the right way. Saw comes right out. It is a two-handed thing. It's got to get set in. I guess you could kind of grab it with one hand, but 
for the most part it'll just be grabbed like that and go and use it and then when I'm done with it just stick it back in here flip that and flip that now it can't go anywhere I guess the last thing that we have to do to make this uh, home for this new coping saw is put these little stickers on here. They are uh, jeweler sizing charts in millimeters and in inches. Looks like a pretty interesting chart. Thanks for coming along with me on this uh, experiment. It's one of the projects where I kind of had an idea going into it, but I wasn't sure how it was going to happen. So it wasn't really something I could teach you guys. I really enjoy these videos, I think, where I have an idea at the beginning and then uh, we just problem solve together. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys are new, please subscribe. If you already subscribed, please share this video with a friend. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, give it a big old thumbs up. We'll see you guys all next time. Peace out.